The Chinese Grand Prix getting removed for this year due to COVID-19 has been brutal for us fans. The Australian Grand Prix was two weeks ago now, and it's two weeks until we get to watch racing again in Baku. The Formula 1 world never really stops though, and today we're going to be taking a look at Red Bull, what the loss of Adrian Newey's right-hand man Dan Fallows meant to the team, the rumours about Newey's exit, and everything else happening at the current championship leaders, so don't go anywhere. I saw in the comments that a lot of you noticed I was away for a week, and no, the rumours of the channel getting hacked and me actually being an AI aren't true. I just had a week's holiday. The people who covered did a great job, I think. But for those of you who missed me, don't worry, normal service will now resume. So get ready for more news, insight, and the ridiculous hot takes you all love to have a go at me for in the comments section. Let's start this video off with a look at Red Bull's old head of aerodynamics, Dan Fallows. He worked for Red Bull's aero department from 2006 till April last year when he joined Aston Martin. As a member of the Red Bull aero team, he had the chance to work under the undisputed king of Formula 1 aero design, Adrian Newey. He headed up the aero department from 2014, reporting directly into Newey. The knowledge and experience he's gained during that time is invaluable. He worked at Red Bull through three different eras of Formula 1 racing and won championships in each, four with Sebastian Vettel in 2010 to 2013, one in 2021 with Max Verstappen and then another in 2022 with Max again. Dan Fallows has proved that he can help his team adapt to the ever-changing technical regulations of F1. So Red Bull's loss when he departed shouldn't be understated. Red Bull won't admit it, but his departure hurt them. After Aston Martin announced his signing as chief technical officer in 2021, Red Bull started a legal battle to keep him at the team until the end of his contract in 2023. You don't spend hundreds of thousands of pounds on a legal battle to keep a staff member unless you think they're really, really good at their job. Since he's joined Aston Martin, the green Red Bull jokes have been flying from the Red Bull camp. Shortly after he arrived at the team in 2022, the AMR22 changed its side pod concept to something that looked similar to Red Bull's own. Aston Martin proved to the FIA that they'd been experimenting with the idea before Red Bull had revealed their car though, and the claims of intellectual property theft died pretty quickly. Then this year, Red Bull have said multiple times that it's great to see three Red Bulls on the podium, but we've pointed out in a few videos already that those statements just aren't true. Clearly, Red Bull are bitter about losing Dan Fallows, but like I said, there's no way they're going to admit it. Christian Horner was recently asked about Fallows' exit by Sky Sports. In the UK, you've got seven teams within probably a 50-mile radius, so inevitably there's going to be competition. The proximity of teams is what allows a lot of staff movement to happen. If teams were spread all over the world, we'd probably see a lot less movement and staff poaching. While it is an advantage being able to take staff from other teams, it also means that you can lose large numbers of staff very easily. Look at Mercedes, who've lost huge numbers of staff in recent years to teams based in England. Horner insisted that his team doesn't suffer from the same problems though. We've had a very low turnover of staff in our history at Red Bull, and it's great that we've given talent a chance to develop and achieve great things. Talents such as Dan Fallows. When they go to other teams, I'm pleased for Dan that he's doing a good job, but his departure has given other engineers an opportunity and everything is about evolution. The team we have now is even stronger than the one we had two years ago. We're always looking inwardly and looking ahead. The claim that they're better now than two years ago is hard to prove. Dan Fallows' replacement, Enrico Balbo, is without doubt an excellent aerodynamicist. He wouldn't have gotten to where he is if he wasn't. But his CV doesn't read as impressively as Fallows. Seven years at Williams followed by four at Mercedes before a move to Red Bull in 2018 is impressive, but it isn't 20 years working under Adrian Newey. Considering how fast the RB19 is compared to the rest of the field, maybe we're doing him a disservice though. Aston Martin have come on leaps and bounds since Dan Fallows' arrival, and look the most likely challenger to Red Bull at the moment. If Dan can direct the development of his new team to a race win this year, then it could be one of the greatest design efforts I can remember. Going from 7th in the Constructors' Championship with a highest race finish of 6th to 3 podiums in 3 races and an early season 2nd place in the Constructors' Championship is incredible. In just 3 races, they've scored 10 more points than they did in 22 races last season. It completely baffles me each time I look at it. Formula 1's meant to be a sport where you climb the ranks slowly. McLaren and Alpine have 5-year plans for competing for race wins, while Aston Martin just said hold my beer and went from 7th to 2nd. 
Team Principal Mike Crack knows just how lucky he is. He said the hiring of Dan Fallows and former Mercedes Chief Aerodynamicist Eric Blandin has been a masterstroke for the team and said the pair had an enormous benefit on the team. I'd be lying if I said we didn't benefit from the expertise of those two. The approach is different in every team, so it gave us insight into how we do things. There were rumors circling after the race in Australia that Aston Martin weren't done yet with poaching Red Bull staff, though. Incredibly, the F1 world started to talk about Adrian Newey moving on from Red Bull to take on a role at Aston Martin. Newey has been at Red Bull since 2006 and, according to reports from the team, has the freedom to work how he wants and directs the technical department in whatever way he sees fit. He and Horner have worked together since the team began and seem to have complete trust in each other. That kind of working environment isn't something easy to come across. His history with Red Bull made the rumors of Nui's pending departure even more shocking, but Christian Horner was quick to refute them and try to ward off any other interested teams. Considering Nui's designs have yielded five constructors' championships and six drivers' crowns for Red Bull so far, including a run of title doubles from 2010 to 2013 and another brace in 2022, it's no surprise that Red Bull don't want him going anywhere. Speaking to Sky Sports News about Nui's future, Horner said, his heart is still very much in Formula 1 and his commitment to the team is, it's not something. We don't talk about contracts or longevity of contracts, but he'll be here for many years to come. He's such an important part of our team and a popular part of our team. It's great to have him with us for the long term, but also to be involved in projects like some of the things that we're now getting involved in. If Red Bull are upset at the loss of Dan Fallows, they would have to go into mourning if Adrian Newey left. Adrian has been at the heart of every Red Bull car, and his skills as an aerodynamicist cannot be overestimated. There is no team he could go to that would offer him more creative freedom and support than Red Bull. Someone might be able to offer him more money, but it would have to be an otherworldly amount of money to replace what he has at Red Bull. Nui is respected across the sport, and his experience with ground effect flaws in the 70s has made him invaluable to Red Bull. It wasn't luck that made Red Bull the only team to anticipate porpoising, and deal with it as effectively as they did last year. F1 technical director Pat Simmons says he knew at last year's pre-season that Red Bull had nailed the new regulations, saying when he got to the Red Bull floor, and I saw it on a structural level, they're on top of this. Nui has been applauded for that, Horner saying of his design guru, he's the only bloke that can see air. He lives in the matrix. He's been the conductor of the technical orchestra for all these years now. He's still very hands-on, he's still at his drawing board. I think it's probably the only drawing board in Formula 1. As much as Dan Fallow's exit from Red Bull will have a huge impact on the team, his replacement, Enrico Balbo, now has the opportunity to learn from the best in the business and will no doubt help to steer the team to many more world championships. As for Adrian Newey, if the rumors of his exit turn out to be true, that would be almost beyond belief, but we can't see a situation that would ever happen. What do you think of the job Dan Fallows has done at Aston Martin? Will his exit hurt Red Bull in the long run? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And until next time, drive safe and bye for now.